Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. How are you doing? Hope you're good. Right then, we're going to change things up a bit now. Uh, up to now, we've been doing like a, a Monday review of the weekend's racing and like a Friday preview of the racing of the weekend. I've lost my mind to Cheltenham now though. So what we're going to do, we're just going to focus in on Cheltenham now. It's, uh, what, four weeks away, so isn't it? So it's going to be all Cheltenham now. If I do see anything that I really particularly like, that's coming up when I'm doing one of these videos, I'll give it a mention. And we will still look back a little bit at, like, any key races that might be of significance for Cheltenham in the meantime. But, yeah, it's... So I'll tell them now. It's good, isn't it? Um, this Monday coming, we'll do like an anti-post roundup. As promised. I'll get all that together. I'll probably do, I've got it in my mind, I'm going to do a video sometime. Just of some like general pointers for Cheltenham. Um, just sort of approaches and just like little things I've picked up along the way and we'll do like a a preview we'll do like the preview of each day and we might do that twice we might do that sort of in the next week or two maybe and then like the week before when we know pretty much what's running where and the handicaps as well we can include the handicaps then all good, yeah. We'll just wing it anyway. We'll make it along, but we're, we're all uh, Cheltenham now. As for today's video, yeah, they'll be a bit more sporadic as well. I'm not going to have any set days as such. But I'll try and let you know when I'm doing one, when the next one's likely to be. Um, yeah. Sometimes bets are kind of time sensitive, aren't they, for Cheltenham, so... There might be one or two just like short videos if I see something I like there that I think the price could shift. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, as I say, as for today's video, I've got quite a lot. There's loads of anti post uh, bets today. I've been shopping this week. Right then, Django Bay ran yesterday, didn't he? And um, he got beat. A bit disappointed there. Um, yeah, he were getting a bit of weight away, and I don't think he had the best ride there. But yeah, he got beat anyway. And so, like, he's off the kind of shortlist for the Ballymore now. So we can put a line through him. The winner as well. I'd you know, like I say, we're giving a bit of weight away. I wouldn't really be having a winner either on my mind for Cheltenham. So, looking at the Ballymore, the only other horses, apart from the ones at the front of the market now I can see coming into this, is really possibly no flies on him. And Bill Ricky Dicky, now, and I thought it's probably unlikely no flies on him is going to find himself here. Particularly if I'm right about the uh, mystical power coming here. And Bill Ricky Dicky, it would be interesting, but I suspect if we're right about Ballyburn, you know, I'm looking at it from that approach. If Ballyburn goes supreme, then I think the Atlantic would come here. And I'd expect, well, I won't be 100% sure, but I'd expect Paul would ride Il Atlantic over Billy Ricky Dicky. In which case, you'd have to not fancy Billy Ricky Dicky so much, would you? Yeah, so I think the only way he'd come into it really is if Paul chose him, if he's Paul's ride, which we're not going to find out for a while yet. So I think we're like the front end of the market here. As you know, I, I like Mystical Power. I suspect she'll be he'll be coming here. Now, 
but I'm more inclined to cover Slade Steel now. And I think a good way to cover Slade Steel for a small outlay is I'd, I'd played this Ruby Double they had on Paddy's, which is Ballyburn to win the Supreme and Slade Steel to win the Ballymore. Yeah, I don't really put up many multiple bets here. You know, this is a double, really, I'm putting up here. But I'm going to put this up because I think it's a good way to cover him for a small outlay. He'll kind of set the bar in this race, Slade Steel. And after Ballyburn sort of taking the Supreme apart, he's sure to shorten up in the market. So... I mean, at that point, you can lay a little back if you like. Um, yeah, the, they've took it down today. We're 12 to 1, the double. Now, you can still get 12 to 1. That's with Betfair Sportsbook. And we're going to have two points on him there at the Betfair Sportsbook. That's not non runner no bet, though. But it's up to you if you prefer to take the non-runner no bet, which I totally understand. That's fine. Then that's uh, 19 to 2 at Hill's best price. Two and a half points less. It's probably really worth taking the non-runner no bet for that, I guess. But for the purpose of this, uh, this I'll just I'll just count it. One of the 12s there. Now. I know all this, I'm basing this on Ballyburn going to Supreme and that is my view of what will happen. The markets this week would suggest, I think that's the way most people are thinking now. But don't mistake that for thinking, you know, there's been some sort of secret meeting somewhere and it's already been decided because it won't be. I think it's just, uh, that's what people are thinking at the minute. It won't be decided until the week before. They'll work all the horses. And it would only take, say, Ballyburn to work a little flat and either like a Mirrors or West or Mystical Power to burn up the gallops. And plans could change. So it's not set in stone as yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm basing my betting around my kind of how I see it going. Okay. Oh, the other horse I've mentioned now, I guess, for the Ballymore would be reading Tommy wrong. But I think he'd eat three milers, as I suggested before. Three milers don't really win this. But I guess if, if the ground were to come up heavy, say, then he'd come into it. But I think he'd need the ground like heavy or something. So yeah, that's the first of our bets today then. We'll have a two point double. Ballyburn Supreme, Slade Steel Ballymore. Okay, let's so do the non runner now bet or, or not. It's up to you. Right then. Now, just looking at this weekend's racing. We have you to Cheltenham. Saturday, 120 Ace, two mile rated hurdle. Now, four out of the last five Boodles winners have taken this race. So, you know, we need to pay attention here. Joseph Slark in the morning runs. He took this with Band of Outlaws, who then went on to win the Boodles. Pacini runs here for Gordon, who Jazzy Matty got beat in this last year, but still went on to win the Boodles. I think, did he not train Aramax as well, who took this before winning the Boodles? Nara runs here for JP, Henry de Bromed. Now, out of those four Boodles winners, three of them, from this race were all JPs and all JPs won this race. 
so he's one to look at. Although to kind of counter that, Henry's the sort of trainer whose horses tend to come on a lot from the preps going into Cheltenham, maybe more than any other trainer. Now, I've been going round in circles with this. So there's also open to question Noel Mead, who took the boodles with Jeff Kidder in the last five years, although he didn't run in this race. So, yeah, I mean, last year I watched this race and they were all over the Charles Burns horse. You know, I watched it back multiple times and I liked the Charles Burns horse. And he got chinned by Jazzy Matty, who got beat in this race also. And, you know, watching this race last season, yeah, I couldn't have had Jazzy Matty, so... You know, don't maybe take the form too literally what happens tomorrow. I tied me back in those first three before tomorrow. I ended up leaving it in the end. I tied me sending not sweet a little bit. Lark in the morning, he's seven to one favourite for the Boodles. You don't miss a treat, do they? Um, Puccini, he's 12 to one. And Nara, 16 to one. They're all the best non-runner, no-bet prices. I've I've left it in the end, but yeah, it's a race to be paying close attention to. And maybe in the aftermath, maybe have a bet there. We'll see. And then we'll go to Sunday at Nice. First race there, two mile maiden hurdle. The well regarded Goucher goes here. He's out Frankel, you know. Um, he could yet, I suppose, come into the Supreme, be an impressive victory here. He wears a hood and he's also got a first time tongue tie. It wouldn't inspire confidence. Um, but yeah, it'll be a, worth a watch anyway. 215 listed two mile five apples jade mares novice hurdle brighter days ahead goes here finally we get to see her again oh, she's odds on it I expect her to win well I think she'll love the step up in trip There's a reason, isn't there? There's a reason why Willie Mullins is winning all these races. He's, he is the best trainer. Um, it's not happened by accident, this. Now, you know, you look at Jay de Grugy, she won two and a half mile, stepped her down to 2-2 two, two in the Sol Arena, and then goes for the 2-1 of the Mayor's Novice. I love that. I love that. I hate this. I hate this prep. Two mile five on heavy. I don't know why. I don't know what he's doing here. I don't like this prep. Um, we've seen the horse. To me, she needs to get more experience at travelling at speed for Cheltenham. You know, she needs to sharpen up a little bit. She has been learning. She's not going to learn much here, I wouldn't have thought. 2-5 on heavy. I, I, I don't like it, I don't. There's a reason Willie Mullins is the best trainer there is. I actually threw a little bit of change and, and a tiny, small, small bit of change at a, a 100 to 1 for the mayor's hurdle. You know, I'll, if there's any mention of Mayor's Hurdle after this race, you won't be wanting to take Lossy Mouth on, would you, when he can race against the novices? But yeah, just as the tiniest chance he might have that in his mind, I don't know. I 
don't like the 2-5 on over here. Right, we're in a good position with this Mayor's Novice Hurdle. We are. We've we've got Bright Days ahead, double figures. We've got Jay Degruji back to a nice price. Just this prep. Just I mean, she, she'll probably win well, but I, I don't like it. And it's just got me a bit windy on her. So we're always going to press up a bit more, I think, on Apple's Jay, depending on Brighter Days ahead. I think, yeah, I've just got a bit windy about that, so I think now's the time to play that. Um, Jade Degrusy, sorry, not Apple's Jade. Um, she's half as good as her, will be all right. So we're going to have six points on Jade Degrusy at five to two. We've already got two points on her at seven, so you might have got eights there. We've got three points on Brighter Days at it, tens, haven't we? So then that just leaves Dysart Enos to cover, and I've been wondering if to cover her or not as well at the moment. She's seven to two. I don't know, I'm like that. But yeah, we're def that's a definite bet anyway. We'll have six points, five to two, Jade Degrusy. So that's that. So we've got like a nice 30 odd points back for Jade Degrusy or Brighter Days Head now. We'll cover Dysart Enos to get a stake back. I think that's a good race. As, as things have worked out, we've got a good opportunity there in my mind just to tie that race up. I think one of those three wins. Right, the 2.45, two mile five boy in Erdl. I'd kind of like Blazing Carl as a bet here. He's, he's fragile. He took this well last time, last season, didn't he? First time out. These sort of horses often best to catch fresh and then just leave. A um, little like Monkfish the other day. But I think he's, just looking at the prices, I think he's less than twos there, so... You know, I'll let that go. I'm not interested in him at like seven to four. Um, Eden Valley Lake might be just keeping an eye on here with a handicap in mind. Uh, didn't look to take to fences last time. Still likely raced over hurdles. Could be in front of his mark. Yeah, um, could turn up in something like a coral. Maybe, I don't know, but could be an us just to watch anyway and see how he goes. Three mile grade two, ten up novice chase. Nick Rocket goes here with Paul Townsend, Manella Kakuna, Danny Mullins. Got American Mike here, he's got to bounce back from a disappointing run last time. Favourite de Champeau, likewise, ground will suit here, but has to give Willie's two five pound, which looks a tough ask. Right, this is, uh, we'll have a bit of Willie Mullins bingo time. Melt shed this stuff, it does. <laughs> Now, I was thinking, Factor file. I've just about decided in my mind would be certainly going to the Turners. Right. But as happens with these Willie Novices, if anything happens to one horse, it can have a knock on effect to all the other ones. It's like a domino effect. And You know, I'd made my mind up he were going turners. Then the day after, pretty much, Grange Clare West came out of the Browns. He's out for the season now. Iroko's like some phoenix from the ashes. He seems to be on course for Cheltenham now. Um, they mentioned the Arkle and the Turners. We see he's in the same ownership as Factorfile. JP's there. Can't see that horse in an Arkle. You can imagine if he gets to Cheltenham, it would have to be the Turners. So I don't know again. I don't. 
So, I mean, and you're looking like if Gaelic Warrior doesn't get there, what's Paul going to ride? Could that push Fasal Vega? They could be almost forced to push him up to a Turner's trip. Uh, he does it well, Shed, doesn't it? So here's like a pocket talk scenario, if you like, something that would suit us nicely. It's definitely a possibility, but yeah, it's a, it's a possibility that would suit us well anyway. You know, the fact to fall in the Turners would, we've got him back for pretty much bang on the same in each now the Browns and the Turners so from that point of view it don't really matter it's only just that in the Browns we've got a couple of nice tickets on other horses there so if he did go Turners then them tickets look much more viable like you know in his absence so this would suit as well right if Manila <laughs> Kakuna I think he'll take him along, I'd imagine. He's, so he's going to lead a, bit, a decent clip, hopefully. Hoping he jumps a bit slicker. As he were a bit big and airy last time. Nick Rocket will pick him up late on. Win quite well. Nick Rocket would then become the Browns horse. He'd fill the Grange Clare West vacancy. Leaving Embassy Gardens in the four miler. Because that's another possibility, isn't it? We had Embassy Gardens in the four mile that he could bring him back to fill that vacancy. So hopefully Nick Rocket will take care of that. Leaving Embassy Gardens in the four miler. Because I would much prefer him in the four miler. I don't know if I'd fancy him so much for Browns. Manella Kakuna. Now this is where we get a bit creative. Maybe could then drop back to the Turners. Now, he often does something a bit wild, doesn't he, Willie, with these novices? And watching him over hurdles, you know, he were a bit free, a bit gassy, and he, he never really, to me, got completely home over three mile. He looked to me at that time, I mean, he did then miss a season, didn't he? But at that moment in time, I was thinking... He could be like a Turner's kind of horse, go from the front under aggressive ride. So, if he drops into the Turner's, regardless of Gaelic Warrior, Paul would have a ride there. Or if Gaelic Warrior goes, then maybe um, Danny would ride. He's good on the front runners, isn't he? He could be like aggressive from the front, which is always a good tactic in these two and a half mile chases at Cheltenham thinking it suits the front runners which will kind of soften up Ginny's destiny and Mark can just sit there watching on on factor file can't he and make his move when he likes when the front two have kind of roughed each other up a bit yeah that's one possibility anyway it suits us sweet um, if you think there's any Jads a Kakuna coming here, you can get 33 to 1 with bet 365, and that is non runner, no bet. But um, I'll, I'm not playing that myself, but yeah, that's just how I kind of hope things might pan out, but we'll see. It does melt, yeah, doesn't it? It's you try not to think of it, but Willie's novices, he's got so many, hasn't he? Like I say, one thing happens to one horse, it causes a big knock-on effect to everything else. It does make things difficult for us, doesn't it, playing anti-post when he's got, you know, so much talent there in the novice department and there's so many different options for him at Charlton. It does, it's, it's a minefield, isn't it? Yeah. Right, anyway forget about that for now the bumper that closes the card now Jeroboam Mashan is out isn't he which is a damn shame because I thought he he had a cracking chance he did 
So that's a shame. Now, this is a bit weird, this. This is like almost Twilight Zone stuff, because if you remember, if you saw, when I put up Jeroboam Bashan, I mentioned Cantico, and, you know, he had no entries at the time, and then the very next day, he had an entry for Sunday or it might have been two days later for this race tomorrow, Sunday, sorry. That's Twilight Zone stuff, that is. I don't know where I pulled Cantico from. I'm just a bit concerned if he came out and won really well, he could become the horse, because I think he were regarded as Willie's best bumper horse. He comes here, he were disappointing first time out, and he does have to take a big step forward from his debut. He's 14 to 1, non runner, no bet with Sky. He's much bigger on the exchange, he's sort of 20 to 1 or so. But we'll just have a point on him at 14s, non runner, no bet. You you want that because obviously if he if he's disappointed again Sunday, he won't be going to Cheltenham. We can at least get our money back. If he goes to Cheltenham, you'd imagine he's won this well, and he could uh, he could be crashing down in price. So, just for the weirdness of it all, we're gonna have a point. We've got to have a point on this county car. We've got to. Like I say, I think he were the vibe I were getting anyway. Where he he were Willie's best regarded bumper horse. So we'll see with that. The other one, yeah, just one point. We've also just had one point on the yellow clay. It would have been better doing this video yesterday because some of these prices have changed before I've got this video out. You could have got 16s on this fella. It's 12 to 1, non-runner, no bet now, I think, generally. So we'll go with that. We'll have a point on him at 12 to 1. Now, that bumper at the DRF I think that were the best pump who ran all season that were the best form there Jeroboam showed I think this were the second best horse on the day in that bumper he went off at 40s you'd imagine he'll come on a ton for that and if he does he's got to be right in the mix here we'll take him non running no bet because I haven't seen anything I don't know if he's definitely coming here or not so, yeah, we'll be cautious. We'll have the non running out bet and we'll just throw a point on him as well. So, we've got two little bets there, sort of double figures for the bumper. And then we'll have another look at that. Uh, right then. So, yeah, it's two bets for the bumper. Big top up on Jade Cruzy. And we got that double there, aren't we? The Ballyburn Slade still double. Now on to the Arkle. Now this is a poor looking Arkle now. There's no standout. It's not like a Shishkin year or an El Fabiolo V. John Bon, is it? It's looking a poor Arkle. It's wide open. I don't think El Fabiolo is going to be uh, shaking in his horse box after this race. Marine Nationals at the front of the market. He blew out last time. He's got to be taken on here, I think, you know. Willie. This is how I see it going, unless he's kind of almost forced to push Vassar Vega up in trip to provide Townsend with a ride. The Turners, I think Willie really wants to run Vassar Vega here. I think he'll have Paul on him. I think he'll be the stable number one. I do. Hunter Jean will come here. He should have Daryl Jacob on him. I see Ilete Tomps coming here. 
I think they'll leave Danny on him. And I think Blood Destiny, I think they'll bring him here to probably Patrick on him. And yeah, Blood Destiny should ensure it's a nice gallop as well. It should go a nice pace for Fasal Vega. Stop shaking your heads. Yeah, I, I do think Fasal Vega's got a chance here. I do. I think he's going to win a big race. I think he'll be the best of the willies myself. However, as I mentioned last time, generally you want to be coming into this race in good form. The last 10 winners all won last time out. Even Western Warhorse, I know he did win, it's, it's hard to believe, but he did, even him. Now looking at it from this angle, you quickly got a short list of Illite Toms, Hunter Jean, JPR1 and Quilixios. Now as I mentioned before, I just think Fasal Vega will finish in front of Leite Tomps. Leite Tomps were really impressive at that meeting last year. Finished a long way in front of Fasal Vega, but the placings were reversed at Charlton. I think they will be again myself. The meet. Hunter Jean looks a possible. He looks to have a bit of an engine there, but he did make a bad mistake last time the time before he did as well and he came down that time that would have to worry going into an arkle additionally you know he were quite well fancied for the county last year and didn't run well there he's sort of disappointed a bit there so the two as i suggested i've come down on here aquilixios and jpr1 now, Quilixios is a festival winner, trained by Henry de Bromed, who's fantastic with these two-mile chasers. He's got a brilliant record at Charlton with two-mile chasers. His jumping looked much improved last time when he beat Safferer. He's not been trained like an Arkle or has he? The time before that he ran at three miles, so it's not like they thought, oh, we got an Arkle horse at the beginning of the season. And I just wonder, you know, watching him against Safra last time, I just wonder how much more he's got there. He's, it's like, I'm not sure if he'd come out and met him again, is he going to put him away be 10 lengths next time or not? I don't know if he's on that, you know, big improve. I'm not sure. Um, but given all that other stuff, you know, festival winner, Henry de Bromhead won last time out. He'll get further than two. He's, he looks pretty solid and at double figures... We'll have a, a point on him at 10 to 1 general. He's another one yesterday, we would have been 12s. But... And yeah, the other one there, JPR1, he's had four chase runs, he's two from four, he's improved £20 over fences. He did look to pull himself up last time. He did. I think he has slightly unhinged this horse. But there's something about him I like. There is. He looked unlucky to come down at the last at Cheltenham. And he was going to be impressive that day. It was just that, that change of gear he showed between the last two. He was like, bang, he went. I, I thought that were very taking that. He generally jumps well. He's an athletic sort. He'll go on any ground, but I think this horse has got gears and the better the ground, the better he'll be, I think. I think he'll enjoy a strong pace, I think. He's on a pretty steep upward curve 
and I just think the best is to come with him. I think he's got a big performance in him if it all falls right for him. And it might do. It might do in the Oracle. So we'll have two points on him at 12 to 1, 365. These are both non runner no bets. You know, I'd still be inclined. I, I, I still look at the anti post, anti post markets, but you know, a lot of the time you're just not getting the value there. You may as well go the non runner no bet. Our recycle bin's pretty full, isn't it? And as we saw there with Jeroboam Basham, it's uh, you know, just for taking fractions of a shorter price, you're better off with a non runner no bet. You just are, but yeah, JPR one. So they'd be like, you know, if I'm coming into this fresh, they'd be my two picks. We are a bit sort of way down, aren't we, with Fassal Vega? We went big on him early. So we can't go too mad on these other horses. But yeah, they look to me at double figure prices. You know, those in front of them in the market have got plenty enough questions to answer themselves. I think these two look all right. So 10s, 12s, yeah. I'm happy to have them on side. And at the prices, they're, they're not bad drags like, you know. And then, still not finished yet. The last two. These are, these are our first foray into handicaps. Now, these are kind of just two horses I've noted this season. And they're almost guilty pleasures, if you know what I mean. But, I, you know, we're playing them non-runner no bet. And if they are in those races, I know I'd have something on them. So we may as well get them back now. The first one there's St. Felician. 14 to 1 non-runner no bet for the Grand Annual. Now, yeah, I've, I've had an eye on this horse this season. Really from his second run, his second and third runs. On debut, he seemed to jump quite wildly out to his left. But he only beat nine length or so by Fassar Vega. He was ten in front of Spillane's tower there, who... You know, to be fair, he's improved plenty from that, you know. He was given a quite enough ride that day. And they stepped him up to two and a half mile. And he finished 13 length behind Indiana Dream. And this is when he took my eye a bit. Because he did still go left, but not as much. He weren't as pronounced. And I just thought his jumping were noticeably fast and slick. And he didn't seem to go at home to me. And I was thinking then, this fella wants drop into two mile. You might have remembered then, I mentioned. I'm just wondering if this could be a sort of plot job for the Grand Annual. And then he came out two and a half mile again at Gowan. Uh, he got beat there by a tactical move, who went on the outside of him on the better ground. He's jumping where again fast and slick. He jumps like a two mile of this horse, and he, he seemed to empty a little close home too. I say he did get the worst of the ground as well that day. I just think this horse is going to be really interesting. Drop to two mile in a handicap. I do. His rating's hard to work out. He were 147 over hurdles. He ran in the Coral Cup off 149. I mean, he, he, he's always been well regarded, this horse, and he ran in that Coral Cup as a five year old, carrying 11 stone 7 off a rating of 149. And they backed him into nine to two favourite. I thought that crazy, like, you know, mad. But, you know, they do think something of this horse. He pulled up there, but then he missed a season. So I'm kind of thinking something probably happened to him in the race. 
I'm not sure he goes here, but if he does, I know I want to be on him. And if he does, he won't be 14 to 1. Like I say, his rating's quite hard to work out, but you know, if they give him a silly high rating, then he just won't come here. Um, yeah. So we're going to have three points on him at 14s for the Grand Daniel non running no bet. That's, I think, generally 14s he is. And the other fella there, this is this is kind of a guilty pleasure. This it is, but Forrest, we mentioned him, didn't we? But DRF won the horizon, so we got wrapped up in that. Should have got on him then because he has come in from tens to eights now. I know the price; it's. It's not great, is it? Do you know, you look through... I looked through the... I actually counted these as well, because it's mad. It is mad. 40 horses priced at 16 to 1 or under for the Martin Park. 40. That's... That's mental, isn't it? It is. Um, Forest. Yeah. Look, he ran in the same race that Stateman went for. And I just, do you know, you see a horse sometimes and you just fall for him, don't you? I just, just fall for this guy. Just the way he just kept running around after the line, you know, the way he jumped. He just loved jumping and galloping. He, he's, yeah, he just loved, loved running, didn't he? Um... I think he'll make a chase of this guy. They do look like kind of, you know, baby fences, those Limerick hurdles, don't they? And, you know, he had the amateur on him there, didn't he? Uh, the claimer. Uh, so he's rode him already. I could see this guy in the Martin Pipe. I could. But he does need another run to qualify. He needs a few things to go his way, doesn't he, to even get to the race. He needs to run again. He needs to run well, but not too well, you know, so he gets one, four, five or less. So he needs quite a bit to go his way to get here. It could easily be just a money back bet, this. Eight to one. Don't look exciting, granted. But if he does line up here, he could be a fairly short price favourite. I know there's plenty of, you know, possibilities in that race. But I don't think he'll be getting eights. He won't be going out in price this fella. So we may as well get on him now, just in case he turns up here. So we'll have three points on him at the eight to one. It's old Forest, yeah. Right. So that's that then for today. Um, as I say, I'll be back on Monday. We'll do our anti post roundup there. So I'll catch up with you then. So enjoy your weekend anyway. I hope you do find some winners. And uh, I'll see you again Monday. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. I really do. Bye.